Okay. That's your synchronized one. Mike W5 VSI, you know, this parachute came back to the last flight, USS 180, with canopy inverted, and it had been passed with the uh, spreader ring at both ends, including the, uh, the payload in here. Um, and I tried to uh, de it, and uh, I ended up uh, probably making it worse instead of better. At any rate, uh, from the pictures we took at the recovery site, I discovered that it was Dave Galpin and Larry Surdy were the recovery guys. And so I went to those guys and said, hey, your turn to fix it. So Dave got it back to me uh, last week, and uh, he did get a de Rubik and it works fine. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to recover this thing so that you don't have that problem in the past. And Merlin, remember, you, you taught me that, right? USS-5, I brought USS-5 parachute back, and it was totally screwed. <laughs> Merle would never let me hear the end of that. Okay, starters, this is the way it, this is the way we deliver to the launch site, and I'm just going to go through real quick uh, parachute prep, because i got to take it so it looks like it's landed. First of all, I've added this hermaphroditic Velcro strap. This stays on the spreader ring, okay? And for flight, just fold this thing up so the fuzzy side gets covered up. That way when it lands, it's not going to pick up a bunch of dirt and screw up all the Velcro, all right? So that's how we come back. I'm going to leave the, the uh, fast release here in the bubble wrap right? because that really doesn't make any difference. Um, and we're going to take off these, these little ties. These ties are extremely important. They're not just four of them. I'll explain to you as I put them back on the purpose that they serve. But they're in parachute prep. These come off and they get put back on the spreader ring for the recovery team. There's all four of them. Each of those uh, of these ties serves a separate and distinct purpose. It's this not we don't do four of them because four is better than three and three is better than two. A couple turns around the spreader rings all it takes to bring them back. more fun doing it at this temperature than it is at <laughs> the 10 degrees out. With gloves on. It's worth the gloves on. Okay, so this is the parachute configuration that it's landed, okay? It's kind of spread out like this and presumably when it landed it landed with all of the shroud lines, you know, lined up and not messed up. In fact, get an assistant there on the on the apex. Okay. You can see from this that all of those shroud lines are in line with the separate doors. Uh, we've had one, one or two flights come back where the payload actually went above the parachute and came back into the uh, into the canopy and inverted the canopy. Remember that, Pearl? That was a 15-minute descent from 95,000 feet, landed just outside Longmont. 
Now, that was, that was a bad case of post burst chaos. <clears throat> so anyway, this is the configuration that, that you get it back and landing. The idea is to put it back in the configuration that it was delivered to the launch site. So, get somebody to do it. An assistant to it. So, so you're okay. saying, are you saying that all the problems that I've heard about over the years are from when people pick it up and don't handle it right? You're right. saying it always comes back that way? I mean, well, it'll land. Well, when the, if the parachute lands, if it's inflated when it lands, it's not going to be messed up at the landing site. Okay, it's going to be. You know, it's going to lay out. Mother Nature won't screw it up except for that time when we actually had the. I thought that they always came. I thought that was the big problem that when that they got tangled up on the way down. But that's not. Gets 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 tangled up during the recovery process. And, By the people who are doing it. Right. Oh, I okay. That. okay. So. So this is the configuration. This is this is how you're going to get it. Now, I don't know how many guys are out there at the recovery site, but you know. I do this by myself. I've got that end tied to a, a rope on my uh, on one wall of my den. And the other end goes to a rope that goes up my banister up the stairs with a 10 inch on it. Okay, and I'll do this all solo before each flight. So <clears throat> if you got something you can hitch that end onto, you only need two guys: one to handle the parachute and one to keep some tension on the lines. And if you got a piece of rope and two two uprights. You can do a solo. But I figure we usually got three guys out there, right? Okay. Now you want to time me? I'll show you how long it takes to do this right. Right? It's so 04. Start out here at the canopy skirt. Verify that you've got all of the shroud lines in order. And let the lowers fall in between the shroud lines. Like this, okay? They're coming off in order off of the spreader ring. This little hitch goes there. has no way of passing out through the bottom of the skirt. Okay, so that's the purpose of this guy. And the way to make sure that's happening is you snug each shroud line down, you know, individually. The way I do it is just pull it, pull it like this until it stops and put that line aside. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Any old order they happen to be there. This is a 12 line parachute. It can take longer than the 10 line. It's already going longer than the 6 line 5 foot. There. Now, all these lines of this tie is right smack up against the skirt. It's nice and solid. Now, pick up the next one. We go about halfway down from the skirt. the spreader ring. The purpose of this tie is to prevent these lines from opening up enough so that this whole canopy could possibly pass through if it got unfurled. That's another form of Rubik. Wrong encounter with the fourth kind.
So that one wraps up pretty easy. Okay, now, this next one is a little more difficult. And here, you need just a little bit of slack. Start this off, start this wrap, wrap out, pull it to the spread ring and work your way up towards the canopy. Okay. Fumble, fumble. And here you're going to put three or four turns on, reasonably loose, because you need to slide this entire guy down those uh, shroud lines so you don't want it too tight. Okay, the purpose of this is to make these shroud lines look like a bike, look like bicycle spokes up against the spreader. Okay, like that. You know, once you got it down there, snug it up real tight. And the purpose of this one is to keep this entire mess from passing through here unannounced. Okay, when these are nice and tight, it's going to be real hard to pass the entire canopy through there. And similarly at this end, <clears throat> do the same thing. Start wrapping at the spreader ring. And this guy's purpose, of course, is to keep the riser from going through the spreader ring. You know, cinch it up. On this one, I've got a little bit of repair job on the cutting down cord. Again, make it like bicycle spokes. And then snug it up real tight because it does tend to slip. Okay. You might you consider tying those two together right there. Pardon? You consider tying those two tie rods together. Is it here? I've never done it. I, I, I don't know. What do you think we're good for? Or keep them from sliding either way. Um, I mean like this, just sort of yeah. twist them together? No, I suppose. I don't know that we'd do anything though. Well, in case one of them slide, uh, then Oh. Slide well, if it, they, they won't slide if you get them down, down tight. Because, man, look at here. I can't move. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to make this guy out and put all the gores together. Go down flat like that. Fast release. One thing you could do, it's not necessary, what you could do is unplug this uh, Rolex from the, uh, from the cutter device. Yeah. It's not necessary. So you can fold it over, put the top of the cut down device on the same side as the shroud line, and then roll this sucker up nice and tight like a bed roll, which you can carry on your back. On a 20 mile hike out of the mountains. Okay. Nice and tight. Okay, 
then release him to be closed. Now, this guy can now be placed on the spreader ring, and that also gives you extra insurance that you're not going to be able to pass. To disconnect the uh, beacon electrically, I'm going to do this wing nut, and I'm going to have the wing nut be placed with a nice wing nut with a lanyard on it so that it won't get lost. That's the problem here. Okay. Take that off. And now the beacon can be, can be carried back separately. Notice too that I had the uh, the J-pole wrapped up here. It's got its own um, its own wrap on it. When I prep this out and launch, I'll take this wrap off and I'll just wrap it a couple turns around this BNC so it'll be available at recovery. And that makes this guy a little bit easier to haul back to the and that that. How long did that take? Started at 04 and it's 13, so it was nine minutes. The talk. So at uh, wind and cactus. Well if you got wind if you got wind out there, put the apex of the parachute into the wind. Okay, if you got cactus, don't worry about cactus. If, you know, I pulled the cactus shard out of the parachute before, it's not a big problem. Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thanks, man. What are you planning?